Hello and welcome to our first Wanderers video. I'm Jamie. I'm Ash. One of the best things about being a UK based traveller is some of the best historical sites and beautifully stunning natural sites are right here in your back garden. One of the most historically significant sites is Dover Castle. Dover has been a fortress for hundreds of years, dating back to 43 AD where after the Romans invaded they built a lighthouse which is one of the best preserved in Europe. One man who knew the strategic importance of Dover was William the Conqueror. Immediately after his victory at Hastings, he erected a castle here. But this formidable structure is thanks to King Henry II. In the late 12th century, he remodelled the castle and its tower as a palace to entertain guests and be the first line of defence for England. The castle became less and less important as a military outpost until the 1800s when the unstoppable Napoleon and his French army set their sights for Britain's shores. A network of tunnels was built as a barracks to repel the French onslaught. All this aside, Dover's greatest challenge was still yet to come. The tunnels were transformed to hold all three of our armed services at the breakout of World War II. It was in these tunnels that Vice Admiral Bertram Ramsey was tasked with the objective of bringing back a minimum of 45,000 Allied soldiers to continue the war effort. He managed to bring back over 300,000 soldiers that were stranded in Dunkirk. Many things about these tunnels are still covered under the official Secrets Act, but one thing is no secret. Dover has been so important in maintaining our freedom over the years and now is enjoying a well-earned retirement and in allowing the people to really appreciate its beauty. Now on to our tips. These are the fundamental things we learnt on our visit to Dover Castle. Number one, check ahead. Make sure that Dover Castle is in fact open when you plan to go. During the winter months they tend to close during midweek and only open on weekends so please check ahead. Number two, check, uh, check the route. Use Google Maps, make sure the traffic is to a minimal, otherwise you would spend a lot of time trying to get there, which could be time you could be at the castle. Number three, get there early. We got there for around 10 o'clock, which is when it opened, gave us enough time to see everything and have a really relaxing, calm day. Remember, this is a major tourist attraction. Number four, beat the crowds. The majority of the castle is self-guided, apart from the war tunnels, which normally take about two hours to do, and around about 30 people each time, so you want to be at the front of the queue around about opening time to ensure you get to see them. So number five is accessibility. There are a lot of stairs and a lot of walking at Dover Castle. If you require a wheelchair or you have distance walking, please, please, please check the website beforehand to make sure that it is within your capabilities to explore this entire castle. And finally, number six, invest. If you like places like Dover Castle, we recommend getting a National Heritage Pass. £54 for one person or 96 for two. And kids go free within that, so it's a great day out for the family. And on to the final part of the video is our final thoughts. Jamie? Overall, an amazing place to visit. My favourite thing was the World War II tunnels. In it, truly a magnificent, immersive experience. And my only complaint would be that if the rest of the castle is not like that. But if that's your, not your thing, it's fine. I agree. Um, I think the rest of the castle needs to be as interactive if it's going to hold up yep. to the tunnels. Um, my personal favourite was walking around the battlements and seeing yep. the natural sites. Being on top of the castle was fantastic. Was, Out of everything, it was a fantastic day. It is a must, must see here in Britain. So, thank you so much for watching our first video here today. If you liked our video, you can like, subscribe 